guests. But now, we want to take you back to where the BBI task force is holding sittings, listening to various contributions. You understand that um, the team from the Senate, uh, led by Kipchuma Murkom and the Senate Majority Leader and the Minority Leader, James Orengo, have just finished making their presentations. And currently, there are teams of uh, champions of, of, of uh, mental illness in the country of course those that are advocating for the affairs of uh, patients who may be dealing with mental illness just listening by telling a little bit about the establishment of the national mental health and happiness commission thank you mr chairman thank you so much um our chair dr njenga um it's a really good privilege for us it's a great one uh, the work that you've done for this nation cannot be rivaled at this point, and we thank you deeply about it. I will go through the legal framework that we found in this country that either supports or does not support mental well-being of Kenyans. And I think it's important for us to understand that if we have something entrenched in the law, it might actually have, and it will definitely have consequences on our people on the ground. Let me begin by speaking about, I'll begin by speaking about our constitution and what provisions it has. I'll also speak about good laws that we have that only just need to be enforced. The third thing that I will talk about is the Mental Health Act uh, from 1989, and right now I know there's a bill, uh, an amendment bill that's going through Parliament. The third thing that we'll talk about is offensive laws that have been actually in our country for the longest time. And finally, I will talk about laws that deal with substance use and abuse and how we can actually make it better. Of course, as everybody in this room understands, mental health issues include issues of substance use and abuse. We also know uh, that that has been part of the president's concern, especially when he spoke on the June 1st address of Madakade. So let's talk about the Constitution of Kenya. In Article 43, the Constitution provides that every person has the right to the highest attainable standard of health, which includes the right to health care services. We submit to, the, to, to this um, uh, task force that we say, Mr. Chair, that health in this context should include and includes mental health as defined by the WHO definition of health. Also in the Constitution, we do have Articles 28, 46, 53, 54, 55, and 57, which address special members of our community and how they're protected. They talk about human dignity as being a right of every Kenyan, and so as our chair has spoken about um, the, the, the deplorable condition in some of these hospitals, you can understand that that is a contravention of the Constitution. Now, I do not want to go too deeply in the Constitution. However, I want to say that all the laws we have in our land need to align to the Constitution. We have a very good Constitution that actually protects all Kenyans, including all members of society that are vulnerable. Um, the second thing I'll talk about are some of the laws that we need to enact. The first one will be the Health Act 2017. The Health Act in Section 73 talks about the provision of, um, of mental health in this country. It gives way to actually forming very robust systems to take care of mental health of our, of our people in Kenya. However, we see that this has been slowed down. For some reason, there's a, there's a problem, especially when it comes to the Mental Health Act. It's taken too long to actually be amended or at least be put in a fashion that is consistent with modern practice. Um, we also know and want to note that Kenya being signatories of international conventions, that the Quality Rights Initiative is one that we need to also add and include when we talk about mental health in this country. Uh, the other law that we want to talk about that really needs to be enforced is the Insurance Act, uh, um, which in Section 82 says, and I want to say this because I think that we have, as a country, been misguided by popular belief, which is contrary to practice that a policy of life assurance shall not be voided merely on the ground that the person whose life is assured died by his own hand or act, sane or insane, words which we find not really uh, good, or suffered capital punishment. If upon the true construction of the policy, the insurer has thereby agreed to pay the sum assured in the events that have happened. In brief, what I'm saying is that the Insurance Act also acknowledges that no matter how someone's life, life ends, whether it is by their own hand or if they die by suicide. We actually, as a commission, have been saying that the way we speak about mental health should inform the way we destigmatize people who live with mental health. So we don't talk about committing suicide. We talk of dying by suicide. So that